Hey everyone, I wanted to talk about a follow-up to one of my previous videos on a new way to retrobrite using royal blue light. These LED bulbs here are the ones that I'm using. They're basically Philips remote phosphor bulbs. If you check out the previous video, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about where I do a little experiment retrobriting something small with one of these lights. I've slightly scaled up the process now to try bigger things and uh, that's what we're going to talk about here. These two bulbs here, as you can see, are missing the LEDs. And I'm not using these anymore. So these have the power supplies for the LED boards. Let's look at what I've actually done. So this is what I'm calling my blue box. It's not blue on the outside, but it definitely gets very blue on the inside. It's just a regular box that was holding paper. It looks like 10 reams of paper at some point. You notice there's a bit of a difference here. There's a giant heat sink and there's this wire on the box. Let's take a look at what exactly I did. With the lid removed and flipped over, you can kind of see the underside of what is that heat sink. So I cut a hole in the cardboard and the heat sink that was rather large on the top used to be a CPU heat sink from some old computer. And I've removed these boards from those LED bulbs you saw they were taken off. So remember each had three boards and each board had three LEDs. I used thermal tape and I stuck all six of these onto this heat sink. And then I soldered the wires together to essentially connect these all as they were in the light bulb. The way they are in the bulb is three of the LED boards are in series. And essentially I've done that here, but these are in parallel. So I have three boards in series and both sets are in parallel. And the reason why I did that is because if you remember from the previous video, the working voltage of three boards was around 24, 25 volts. And I wanted to maintain that. Found some old speaker wire, which was 12 gauge, connect that up, made a little hole in the cardboard and ran the wire through. And looking on the top side, the heat sink is just sort of taped on. This particular heatsink has these little bit of lips. So that's perfect actually because I cut the hole smaller and it sits inside the cardboard but those lips stay on the top so this won't go through. Why did I do a heatsink? Those LEDs are driven relatively hard and LEDs get hot. You need some kind of a heatsink. So this large aluminum heatsink is perfect. Should dissipate the heat really well and allow me to say put a little cooling fan, just rest it right here and blow air across. And I gave myself a good length of speaker cable here so that way I don't have to put this right near my bench power supply. I'm gonna be using a constant current power supply to actually run this thing because that's what you really need to do when you're driving LEDs. For power in the box, I use this power supply here. I have two bench power supplies. They're both constant current capable. The thing I like about this one is it has no fan because it's a switching power supply. So it doesn't make any noise while it's running. The interface on this is, is a pain in the ass. It's hard to use. I don't recommend you buy one of these. I like my Corad more, but this does have a fan. It's rather noisy. And if I'm going to be running this for hours and hours on end, I just rather use the switching one. Moving on to the box, not much to it. I just lined it with aluminum foil. <laughs> I figured that if I did that and I put something in the bottom, that the light will bounce around and actually have a good chance of getting the sides. So let's move on to some experiments and see how well this box works. So this Apple keyboard here is pretty yellow. You can see here I have another keyboard I've retrobrited. The bottom also has some yellowing, but it's definitely a lot less. But I'm going to put this in the box and we're going to see how this goes. My method's pretty simple. I lay out a sheet of plastic wrap. I put the thing to be retrobrited on and I'm going to paint on the cream. All right, now it's painted. I just lay over a sheet of plastic wrap and then uh, wrap it all up together. Okay, the silver box. So let's see, I might have been a little overzealous here. I can't fit everything in <laughs> together without it overlapping. So I guess I'm gonna just do one at a time. So we're gonna do the top of the keyboard and we're gonna do the space bar. And the problem with these space bars is I have it wrapped in plastic, but it has a tendency just to sort of flip over. So we're gonna put that on all the way down like that for maximum reflectance. I have a little 12 volt cooling fan to blow air over the heat sink. And here on my bench power supply, we're gonna put 700 milliamps into it. So there it goes. You can just see the blue light popping through there. So I'm just gonna leave this for a while, probably eight hours. Okay, let's see how this is doing. Whoa, the blue light, so much blue light. In case you're wondering as well, the temperature of this, I should have measured it with my infrared gun, but it's it's completely room temperature. There's absolutely no warmth to the keyboard cover whatsoever. Okay, what I always do next is I'll dry off any water and then I'll apply 303 to it. If you look, if I put these up together next to each other, 
Dare I say that the Apple extended keyboard is actually slightly more yellow still, even though I did it in sunlight and left it for quite a while. All right, so the bottom is out of the blue box. So I have 303 on here and I have a few observations. The first thing is the box does a really good job. It's not like things get completely back to exactly the original color. Probably the bottom of this keyboard is more the original color. There's the aluminum foil on the box seems to get the sides of things really well, even when it's the side is really close to the keyboard, because this keyboard takes up almost the entire banker box. Yet, everything is treated really well, like the side, everything is, is good. And when I used to do things in the sun, you really had to keep rotating stuff around. And the other thing is you don't have to massage the plastic or the cream. It just seems like it just being in there and there's no heat doesn't seem to matter. I, I basically put the thing in like like this top. I just stuck it in there, left for work. Came back when I was back from work, took it out. I hadn't even touched it all day. And yet the texture is perfect. That's a real success. So the next thing I want to retrobrite is this Macintosh SE case. This was actually our family computer back in 1987 until now. And it used to sit on a table right in a window. So the back of it got really yellowed. And if I look at the side here, see where the interrupt reset button used to be. But the back is just almost an orange color. It's so bad. Top is a little bit less bad. And this side of the case is less yellow. And the bottom of the computer case gray, but it's got some yellowing as well. It's so I raised the lid up see the computer in there so I just wanted to keep a similar amount of distance between the LEDs and the back of the computer as when I do say the keyboard cover I had it down at the bottom so I raised it up and that way that the light is further away but also I put these uh, aluminum foil on both sides and that's bouncing the light around a bit more inside okay it's been about 24 hours and I think it's time to check on the case so I have actually checked on this. So I've rotated it around and because, you know, obviously this is big and it has different sides. So it's still inside the plastic, but right off the bat, I can just see that the effect has been dramatic. I always love this step because you're kind of getting to see what you've been retrobriting for the first time, you know, without the plastic and all the peroxide on it to see, you know, how well it actually works. And it's always exciting. Of course, it's a bit scary because it would be after the water dried that you would see the marbling or streaking or any other damage that came from the retrobrite. Well, here is the computer. I do have 303 on it, my usual post retrobrite spray, but I just am blown away. This is the first thing I've actually retrobrited that was large in that box. Let's look at the before, but. You see how yellow and orange it looked, especially compared to the label, which didn't change color. And now the entire case, it looks amazing. This is where the reset interrupt was and it was very white and yellow surrounding it. Well, that's gone. You can't even see that anymore. Top of the computer as well is fine. It will be hard to see, but there's maybe a little bit of yellowing still in the depth of the handle there. I didn't really focus too much on that area. This side of the computer looks good as well. The only issue is there's a little splotch. We had a copy stand. Remember those little paper copy stands that was stuck on here with a sort of glue and it had a little plastic thing. I'm not too upset though because overall this looks about a million times better than it did. The front of the computer hasn't been done, but it's not as yellow and that's going to take a little bit more work. This was really my test to see how well it worked. Well, there you go. This box works amazingly. I call it my blue box. And I've already been retrowriting some more things that I haven't shown on video here. And it's done a great job every time. So far, I've had zero streaking, zero marbling, and zero problems with any of the retrobrites. That's not to say that this doesn't cause any damage or couldn't cause damage. But I certainly haven't experienced any. And that Mac SE case was very yellowed. And I would have thought something that baked in the sun would have perhaps got some marbling effects. So yeah, I think I'm going to be using this method a whole lot more. I don't really see a point of using the sun anymore. And now we're going into winter here in Portland. This will be perfect.
So what's left to do for me is I need to scale this up a little bit. This box is just not big enough, so I need to make a bigger box, maybe put some more LEDs on more heat sinks. But nonetheless, I am just super pleased. If you found this interesting, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And uh, you know, definitely put your comments and questions in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this. Thanks for watching. Bye.